So it's important to understand your variables and your data before you can begin data analysis. And one way to understand your data is to be able to describe the type of variables that you have. It turns out there's various ways to describe variables, so we're going to go over a few of those ways. So one is a distinction between discrete and continuous variables. So a discrete variable is a variable that does not have values in between units. Uh, so uh, for example, gender, race, political party, the presence or absence of a psychological disorder, a number that is circled on a 1 to 7 rating scale, all of those are discrete in the sense that there are not values between the levels of the variable. Uh, a discrete variable might be dichotomous or binary, meaning it has two levels. So uh, whether or not a person smokes cigarettes, that would be a binary variable. Or whether or not an individual is still alive, uh, that would be a binary variable or a dichotomous variable, meaning it has two levels. Or a discrete variable may be what's called polytomous or sometimes called polychotomous or multichotomous, which just basically means it has more than two levels, but those levels are discrete. So a variable like race uh, would have multiple levels, and uh, at least the way it's often conceptualized, those levels would be considered uh, discrete. A continuous variable, on the other hand, is a variable that can have an infinite number of, of uh, values between each unit. Uh, so measures such as height, temperature, blood pressure, uh, in theory, anyway, uh, we're limited by the precision of how we can measure things, but in theory, there's an infinite number of points between each point on those scales. Uh, it does get a little tricky, so something like number of Instagram followers. Would you consider that to be a discrete or a continuous variable? Uh, certainly, it can have a lot, of, a lot of levels to that variable. But it's discrete in the sense that you can't have like 12.7942 uh, followers. So in that sense, it's a discrete variable. So that's why it's often useful to think about variables not only in terms of discrete versus continuous, but in terms of quantitative versus qualitative. So number of followers would be a quantitative variable in the sense that the numbers have order and the order has meaning in terms of how much or how many of something, or in other words, in terms of the magnitude of the thing that is being measured. So that would be a quantitative variable. So how many books do you plan to read over summer vacation? Uh, that would be a quantitative variable because the number would represent the, the frequency or magnitude or amount of something. A qualitative variable, on the other hand, uh, can, they're not usually numbered in ways that express magnitude. We might use numbers to represent them for ease of coding. So there's something called dummy coding, where you can use numbers to represent, let's say, levels of a categorical qualitative variable. So something like, what language do you speak most frequently at home? Or what um, is your sex? those would be considered qualitative variables. And we could use numbers to represent the levels, but the numbers themselves do not represent more of something or a greater frequency or magnitude of something. So the main distinction between quantitative and qualitative is whether the numbers represent more of something or a greater frequency or a greater magnitude. If they do, it can be considered a quantitative variable. If they do not, it's most likely considered a qualitative variable.